this is my 94 325 so I'm going to be doing a Swift Spring 14k upgrade it's got 12k IVAC right now and there's a little too soft uh, ride height probably needs to go up a bit but I like the way it looks so I want to keep it the same height while not having that rear roll and I'm not really looking to upgrade the sway bar right now I want to do the spring upgrade and see how it is on the track and then go from there originally this was supposed to uh, be the reshell for my SR20 car but it just ended up being too nice so I just decided to restore it instead and drive it around as it looked like a nice weekend car slash track car I'm gonna bring it over to the shop and see what we're dealing with i'm probably going to do the subframe reinforcements while i'm in there so yeah i'm going to get this over to the shop and start pulling it apart Here's one of the big problems I have with the current spring setup. As you can see, when it's rolling over and cornering, it's pretty much deleting the entire sidewall and just rubbing away. So here's what it's supposed to look like. And then, you know, nice letters, you know, sidewalls all there. And that's what it is right now. Here's the other side. This side's probably a little worse. But yeah, you get the idea. More spring, less body roll. If it still happens, probably, I don't know, roll it more or get a stiffer sway bar and see if that takes care of the issue. All right, so here's what I'm working with today. CNC cut some eighth inch subframe reinforcements. That hopefully they line up, look like they should. Uh, subframe bushings and some swift spring upgrades these are 14k 14k uh, five inches i think i do have the you know trailing arm stuff diff bushings laying around front diff bushing but i think i'm just gonna do the subframe bushing because i always hear people saying to isolate the diff and the trailing arms so yeah, I've never actually tried that, but maybe I'll give it a shot this time. Just do the subframe bushings and see how that feels. Yeah, gonna go ahead and take the subframe out, take the subframe bushings out, weld these in, and see how it is. People always ask me, uh, is there 5x120? No, they're not. They're uh, just, you know, 5x114, 17 by 9 like super common spec RPF ones, uh, plus 22 offset. But yeah, these are actually 5x114 hubs, and then I pressed in some ARP studs. Current setup I have here is just like monotube uh, Godspeed coilovers, I think they are. Yeah, pretty much every monotube coilover like a budget one is all the same they're like Taiwanese shocks and then whatever valving they put in they're pretty much all identical but yeah I have an IBAC spring I think it's a 12k and it's a four inch so you can see it's pretty pretty much using the entire adjuster there and it's it's just a little bit too soft as you can see from the sidewall so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out for a little taller a little stiffer swift spring see how it feels I'm gonna go ahead and pull the exhaust off, drop that rear subframe, see what it looks like up there. So I'm just gonna have to pop that off on the exhaust, drive shaft, uh, undo the trailing arms, undo the shocks, and just drop it down. I already have the e-brake e -brake cables disconnected, so yeah, that's gonna be an easy job, hopefully. From what I can see up there, it's not cracked or rotted or anything, but I'll get a closer look once it's actually out. I'm not going to remove the gas tanks because I never do when I do this job and I haven't had a problem, but 
yeah ideally you want to yeah in case anyone is curious about the exhaust setup three inch turn down with a muffler and you come back here oem g37 resonator just one of them and then to the factory header section so yeah not too complicated sounds pretty good don't really get any drone i'm gonna start unbolting everything hang the calipers drop it down see what it looks like you can really tell i don't drive this thing because that exhaust is full of moisture it's dripping out Alright, got both calipers off and tucked up out of the way. Gonna go ahead and start pulling the drive shaft off. Alright, trailing arm's undone. Everything's ready to drop. Gonna undo the subframe and I have a little strap here just in case on the train jack so it doesn't slide forwards or backwards. It just stays on there. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. Pull the subframe out. Gonna get to cleaning these spots so I can put the plates in. And then pull the bushings out of that subframe over there. Normally I would use uh, weld through primer before I put the plates on but nobody sells it here on the weekend and the earliest I can get it is in like two or three days so I gotta finish this job within the next hour or two. I'm just gonna weld it and seam seal it and hopefully no real moisture gets in there. I don't drive it in the rain or snow anyways so it's not a huge concern for me but you know if, I, if it starts rotting away in the next 30 years then oh well it's not really a problem for me so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and weld it. Everything's all welded in. Just gonna throw a quick of paint over it and then seam seal it. Got all the uh, plug welds grinded down, so should be good to go. Gonna quickly paint them and then push the new subframe bushings in. And here's the final product. So painted over, seam sealed, and then undercoated. So it should have no issues. I know I didn't use the weld through primer, but it should be pretty good.
So subframe is back in. Torque to spec. Not gonna show putting everything back together, but at the springs measured to the same height that the eye backs were. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna throw it all back together and then see how it sits. So everything's back assembled. Got the Swift springs in there. Exhaust is back on. Time to throw these wheels on and see if it's higher or lower, what adjustments I need to make. Then I'm gonna go for a drive and see how it feels, see if it's rubbing still. All right, so it's just a little too high. I'm gonna drop it down a little bit and then once it settles, it should even out to a good height. Take two. It's not perfect, but I think we'll take it should settle a bit anyways. Time to go for a drive. All right, let's see if this uh, camera angle is any good. Sorry if my windscreen is super dirty. Oh, God. yep, there goes my lip. So I can already tell just from this little bit of driving that it's not rubbing or anything at all. settle a bit but at the right height it's at right now it seems pretty good back from the drive no rubbing obviously not at this height come to the other side no rubbing all good so i guess that's a success also this thing a lot of the sr parts are coming in so hopefully get back on that finish the engine start doing some fuel stuff clean up the engine bay things like that get her painted so yep that's it for this one next one hopefully is the engine build because like i said the parts are coming in finally gonna try to plan that for next week and hopefully yep that's it i guess uh stay tuned